When I was a kid and Fire Emblem was a lot less popular than it is now, it was often hard to find people that played the series in real life. So instead I turned to game FAQs, which was filled with advice of wildly varying quality, hot takes, and most importantly, people to draft Fire Emblem games with. Drafting is when you have a group of three or four people and take turns picking units until there are no units left to pick. Then you play the game using the units you selected. All other units can't be used and need to be benched or killed. Super simple, and it will be a familiar concept if you're into sports or trading card games. Drafting is one of my favorite ways to play Fire Emblem for a few reasons. First, when you draft a Fire Emblem game, you end up using units that you wouldn't normally use. In a Shadow Dragon draft I'm playing right now, for example, I drafted Tiki, Eren, and Riss. That's three units I almost never use long term in Shadow Dragon, so just picking them is going to freshen up a game I've played multiple times. Additionally, I'll also have to go without some units that I usually do use. I almost always use Barst and Ogma, but this time I didn't get them, so I'm gonna have to do without. In Shadow Dragon, this completely changes the early game, because the first few maps can be pretty tricky, but even more so when you only have two or three units available instead of an entire army. Another reason I enjoy drafts is that they force you to evaluate units a little bit differently than you would in a typical run of a Fire Emblem game. Instead of just looking at who the best combat unit is or who the best staffer is, how replaceable they are is heavily emphasized. So let's look at Engage. Hortensia is a unit that frequently sits towards the top of Engage tier lists because she's the best staffer in the game. But in our drafts of Engage, Hortensia usually didn't get picked up until after the first round of the draft at the earliest, sometimes after the second. This was because most of the players felt the gap between Hortensia and the next best staffer wasn't as big as the gap between the best combat units and their replacements, so people wanted to pick their combat units first, since they felt using a different staffer to replace Hortensia would be easier than using a different combat unit to replace units like Kagetsu, Panette, and Marin. Basically, in a draft format, good units with difficult to replace utility really shoot up in value. Another example is in a Fire Emblem 7 draft, if the rules don't allow undrafted units to steal items, then Matthew's value as an early game thief really goes up, because picking him gets you some useful stealable items that you won't have access to without him. It's special utility that can't be replaced with another unit. I really enjoy thinking about which units are most valuable in a draft context, I think it provides a new way to think about games that you may have played multiple times, and it's a lot of fun to do evaluation in that context. Another fun part about drafting is the draft itself. Fire Emblem is usually a totally single player experience, so it's interesting to gather together with other Fire Emblem enjoyers to do the draft together. You get to see whether your evaluations match up with other players or not, and you'll have to adjust your plans on the fly as units get picked. So there's some dynamic thinking and team planning you need to do during a draft. In our Shadow Dragon draft, my plan was to pick a Warper in the first round, but I was assigned last pick in the draft, and the first three players all picked the premier Warpers of the game. Since everybody already had their Warpers and the remaining ones weren't nearly as good, I felt like the remaining Warpers would stay on the board for a few rounds, so I decided to pick Combat Carries instead and just risked the Warpers potentially coming off the board. This let me get multiple of the competitive combat units that I wanted, and I was still able to pick up Riss with my fourth pick of the draft. Fire Emblem drafts are full of these little decisions, and all of them are tiny risks, because if I was wrong about the staffers staying on the board, I might have ended up without a good one. Beyond the planning and the moment-to-moment -moment decisions in draft, it's also fun to react to what your friends do. It's exciting when someone unexpectedly drafts Navarre and announces their plan to use him as a magical carry, and you get to feel kind of big brain when a unit you think is good sticks around for a while and you get to grab them with a later pick than you expected. Or on the other hand, really small brain when a unit you thought would stick around gets snatched up early and you have to adjust your plans. Once the draft is over and it's time to actually play the run, it's also fun to share updates with the people you drafted with. Which units got blessed or screwed, how you managed Chapter 1 with no one but Marth and Jagan, and what random early game unit you turned into a curate so that you have staff access. It just makes for a little bit more of a social experience than Fire Emblem usually is. Another fun thing about drafts is that you can make your own rules or make them competitive if you want. For example, two common types of competitive formats for drafts are draft races or LTCs. In draft races, everyone does their draft and then starts playing at the same time, and the winner is whoever finishes first, kind of like a speedrun. Alternatively, in LTC drafts, the winner of the draft is whoever finishes the game in the least amount of turns. So if you're more competitively inclined, a draft can be a good way to add that to Fire Emblem. Or if you just want to have a fun, casual draft, you can do that too. That's what most of my drafts are. 
but whatever rules you do will add some wrinkles to how you evaluate units and plan out your team compositions. Even in casual drafts, you can add some interesting restrictions, like drafting classes in games with reclassing. Last time I did an engaged draft, we used a point system, so each unit cost a certain amount of points to draft, and you couldn't go over a certain amount of points in total. And that was a pretty fun format that changed where certain units got drafted. So those are all the major reasons why I think drafting is really fun, but let me talk about how to go about actually doing a draft. The first thing you need to do is find a group of people and pick a game you all want to play. Most drafting used to happen on forums, and based on a little googling, it seems like you can still find drafts on forums or Reddit, but most of the drafting I've seen seems to happen on Discord these days. There are all sorts of Fire Emblem Discords, including this channel's community Discord that do drafts. Or if you have a few friends that are into Fire Emblem, you can just draft with them. But once you've got a group, you should pick a game. Some games are better suited to drafts than others. Ideally, you want to pick a game with a big enough cast to support the amount of people you have to draft with. For example, if you have three drafters, Sacred Stones is a good game to choose because that means each player will have about 10 units. If you play with more than three drafters, people can end up with some pretty small teams. On the other hand, Shadow Dragon is great for four drafters as the large cast ensures everyone gets a healthy team of about 13 units. You'll also want to pick a difficulty that everyone is comfortable with. For our Shadow Dragon draft, we went with Hard 2, as the higher hard difficulties seemed a little too restrictive in a draft context. Some games are also not great for draft because of the way recruitment works in them. Radiant Dawn, for example, is tricky to draft for because of how unit availability works. Units come and go pretty frequently in Radiant Dawn, and there are a lot of chapters like the one where you only have Nephany and Braum, where you have to make units free for the draft to even work. You can still draft games like Radiant Dawn, you just have to think about how you're going to manage its unusual structure. Depending on which game you pick, you'll also want to set up some rules, what can undeployed units do, for example? A common limitation is that undrafted units can meet shield without weapons and maybe even move around and shop, but they aren't usually allowed to deal damage to enemies and can only be deployed if you need them to recruit another character. You'll also have to decide if you want any banned or free units in your draft. In our Shadow Dragon draft, for example, we made Jagan free for the first four chapters because early game Shadow Dragon isn't very fun without him. Whoever drafted Jagan would be allowed to use him for the entire game. We also made Marth free for the entire game since he's the main lord of the game. In other games, it's really common to make the Dancer free as well since there's only one per game and they provide extremely valuable unique utility. In a game with really powerful over-centralizing units, it's also somewhat common to ban a unit. A lot of Sacred Stones drafts ban Seth, for example, and you can even get more specific with your bans. In our Shadow Dragon draft, we thought about banning Sita, but ultimately settled on allowing her, but banning using the Wing Spear which reduces her power a lot. You'll have to decide what set of rules is right for your game and group. If you're stumped on what the rules should be, though, it can help to Google other people's drafts. Usually, drafts on forums start with a description of the rules that you can use for inspiration for your own draft. Once you have all that set up, it's time to actually do the draft. You should randomize what order you're going to pick in, and then just jump into it. Usually, drafts operate in a snake order, meaning you pick an order and then reverse it. So you'll have player 1 pick, then player 2, then 3, and then 4, and then 4 will pick again, and you'll work your way back up to 1. This makes it so that the last pick isn't getting the short end of the stick by having to pick last every single round. I like to use Tier Maker to keep track of everyone's picks, but you can just type out the draft too. That's how it's usually done on forums. Depending on how many players you have and what game you chose, you may find players don't end up with exactly the same amount of units. One or two players may have one more unit than the rest. You can just live with this if you want. Usually it's not a big deal for a couple people to have an extra pick at the end of draft since only the weakest units will be left anyway. However, a common workaround for this is to just let the people with fewer units pick an extra unit from the bottom or low tier of a tier list you agree upon to fill out their roster. Once you have all your teams set up, you can go ahead and play the draft. If it's a draft race, you need to start at the same time, but otherwise you can play at your own pace. It can be a good idea to set a date when you want the draft to be over by if it's a competitive draft, like if you're doing an LTC draft. That way there's a clear end date where you can see who had the best run. So that's pretty much it. Drafting is super simple, but it's a great way to put your unit evaluation and team planning skills to the test in that you need to decide which units are the most valuable to pick. 
then when you're playing, it tests your ability to do more with less, especially in the early game where you often have to figure out how to beat maps with less resources than usual. It's a fun challenge, and it can make a playthrough of a game fresh, even if you've already beaten it dozens of times. So if that sounds interesting to you, then find a group to draft with. There's tons of discords doing drafts, including our community discord in the video description, and they're a great way to replay your favorite games. It's also a good way to meet some other Fire Emblem players. The social aspect of Fire Emblem drafts is something that really appeals to me, and a lot of the people I met in the Fire Emblem community I met through doing drafts with them. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. Besides these weekly videos, I also stream regularly, so you'll see a schedule for this week's streams on the screen now. And if you liked the video and want to see more stuff like it, consider hitting the like or subscribe button or stopping by a stream to chat. Either way, have an awesome week.